Okay, let's continue our discussion about confidence intervals. Uh, so, so far we've basically talked about confidence intervals uh, within the scenario of them being a two-tailed test where we have thrown our error to two sides. So this is alpha divided by two, and this is alpha divided by two. And that's known as our confidence interval where we have an upper and a lower bound. But sometimes we don't care about about one side, about being wrong to, to the lower end or being wrong to the upper end. So here's an example. So let's say that we want to, that we're a manufacturing company and we want to say that, uh, so let's say claim that we are 99% confident that the true proportion proportion of defects is less than some value. Okay, so here we talk about that we, let's say we're going and talking to our CEO, we're at a manufacturing company, and the proportion of defects is a big, big deal. Now, when we go out and we took our sample, let's say that our P hat, our P hat was equal to, we'll say, 8% of our items were defects, All right? So let's go back to our confidence interval. We'll say that P hat equals 0 0.08. If we did a confidence interval, we could be wrong by missing the true proportion and it actually being something like 0.02. Now, that's kind of silly because at least from my perspective, like if we are talking about the proportion of defects, being wrong by being too small is actually a really good thing. We would love to have a proportion at 0.02, but how it's currently set up with the confidence intervals is that would be considered uh, a failure of the confidence interval because it didn't capture the true proportion. Um, it didn't capture what the true proportion was. Now, what we can do is we can say, instead of talking about a confidence interval, let's talk about a confidence bound. So what the confidence bound then does is say, well, I don't care if we're actually having a really tiny uh, probability or a really small proportion. That's actually really good. So I'm gonna throw all of my error. I only care if we are really big. So I'm gonna throw all of my error to one side. And this, instead of being called a confidence interval, Let's erase that, and it is called the confidence bounds because we just have one bound on either the upper or the lower end. Okay, so what we need to talk about then is how do we calculate this now? It's a little bit different um, because now instead of dealing with um, oh with one tail or now or with two tails, now we are dealing with one. And so we'll, uh, we'll continue our discussion about this and see how can we get the confidence bounds for both uh, proportion and for a sample mean.